everyone, it's MK. Welcome back to MK Quilts. So we have a little bit different sort of a video for you today. What we are gonna do today, and as you can see, Mr. MK and Samson are assisting on this. We are gonna go ahead and install the sidearm upgrade kit onto one of my gallery frames. So some of you have probably already done this, but we hadn't yet. So we thought we'd just walk through it with you. And then if you haven't, or you would like to order them, just hop on over to mkquilts.com. We appreciate your business on that. And uh, so I think Paul's ready to go. Basically what we've done to start with is take the frame, take the bars and the rails and everything off the frame. Paul has read through the instructions and so we're just gonna get started and we're just gonna kind of, you know, film a little here and a little there and let you watch us put on these new sidearms. Okay, let's do it. Alright, so the first step once you prepare the table is to remove the two side arms. You'll use the two included tools in here. You'll need to take off four bolts and as you can see Sammy's helping manage this whole thing. And just watch your knuckles and you just remove the bolt and then we'll remove the arms. Good and there we you, have Sammy. it. <laughs> Sammy says yes. Good job, okay, Dad. Good job. All right. So you guys, all Paul is doing right now is making sure that the bolts stay together because you will obviously need those with the new sidearm. So be careful that you don't lose them. All right, down to the other end. Same thing. And Samson is not quite sure about walking across the table. <laughs> While Paul is doing this, I just also want to make you guys aware of the high rise system. So my table here at MK Quilts uh, for the Fusion, as it's currently set up, has the high rise system uh, attached to it. And if you're interested in that, if you do a lot of free motion combined with Pro Stitcher work, or maybe you have friends that use your machine, uh, it's a good idea to add that on. It's not really a super easy fix, but okay, Paul's ready. Show him the control panel on the side here that oh, has to okay. come off here. Speaking of the high rise system, <laughs> So there's a little control panel for that system. And as you know, the high rise system is the hydraulic lift for the table so that you can set it at different height. All right, so he just took that off and now we're working on the other side. We don't have the high rise system on our website, but if you are interested in it, you can just reach out to us and we'll quote you on that uh, and then probably a good idea for somebody who's mechanically inclined or contact a rep near you to set up somebody to come in and help you with that. Oh, Samson made it down here. <laughs> and you'll see I'm probably going to go ahead and take off those pole cradles uh, because your new system, your new side arm system come with the pull cradles already attached. So that's really a nice feature. Well, Mr. MK just puts those bolts back together. I just wanted to scan over there to my beautiful thread wall and thank Mr. MK for assembling that for me. And also just, <laughs> thank you, Vanna. Also just to remind anyone who's watching this that we offer a thread club through MK Quilts. It is a three cone a month Omni Thread Club. It's 10% off the retail price of Omni Thread and free shipping. Again, if you're interested in the Omni Thread Club, head on over to mkquilts.com. Omni is obviously the thread of choice here at MK Quilts. Okay, so Paul is reading the instructions. Where are we heading next, honey? 
Step two, front sidearm assembly to connection arm. Okay, so I had a little confusion when they were talking about plugged versus unplugged. Obviously, once I looked at the parts, you can see that this one's already got the plugs in. This one, which will eventually have the ratchets, is unplugged. Okay, so for step two, we're going to need these parts over here, which are the M8 washers, nuts, and the bolts. And they're going to be used with the sidearm connection arms and our sidearm assemblies. All right, so these assemblies here are really what these arms are gonna be riding on. So it's important that you put them together in such a way so that if this is on this side of the table, you want the threaded nuts here reachable from the outside and you want to put the washers and the nuts on the inside. Now there's very specific instructions about tightening it down, but then loosening it up enough so that you can adjust it. If you tighten these too tightly, you won't be able to adjust the, the bracket at the end of the table. And just as I'm standing here recording and Paul is assembling, I am facing the front of the table and we're considering the right hand end as you're facing the table to be right. In the instructions, there's several times it mentions left and right, okay? So we're just facing the table and then do your direction, left or right. Okay. All right, so I discovered something that's a bit of a challenge here with these um, inexpensive tools they provide. I found that when you're tightening these side rails, that if you put the tool down flat with the bolt connected, that it was easiest to tighten it this way. As you can see, things don't flop around. You can hold everything in one hand and you can tighten it up. Now what we found out here is you don't want to over tighten this. Tighten it until it feels tight, but then you're going to be backing it off probably a full turn or more because this needs to stay loose enough so that the rails can adjust. Sammy's helping me decide which side these rear side assemblies go on. We like to keep the gallery title out. So this is on the right side from your perspective frame. So we're going to pair that up with the right side where we're going to have our wheel and latches attached to it. So this will go together here, which is what we'll attempt to do next. And that's the right hand unplugged, unplugged assembly. Right yes? hand unplugged assembly and Sammy is taking his spot. <laughs> okay, so as Sammy helps out on that end of the table, I've moved down a bit. So when we put these assemblies together, they're gonna to take the three bolts, three washers and three nuts. And if you're careful and you look at the instructions, it's pretty, pretty easy to find the holes that match up here. Point in fact, the, the front hole gets used and then these other two holes, even though the bracket has a few other holes in it. And once you get the uh, nuts on there, you just tighten them down and this one you can snug up. So we're gonna finish that. So what Paul is doing right now is just pre-tightening some of those screws and uh, we just threw down a few pieces of batting because the table is slippery and also you just want to protect your the surface of your table. So as Paul and I are assembling this uh, apparatus here, we're just talking a little bit off camera about <laughs> us coming to set up your system. Can we bring Samson? Look how well behaved he is. 
<laughs> Gotta love it. That one is for the left hand end of the frame. And just again, the smooth side of the bolt facing out, the nuts and the washers on the inside. Separate that one a little bit. Ah. What do you think, Sammy? Does it look right? Okay, so this is on a fusion frame. Uh, if you're doing the infinity, when I talked about the two holes here, it shows real clear in the document that you need to hit the other hole so that this comes out another four inches or so to give you that extra space, the extra throat depth. So multiple holes in that extension assembly there. And which one you choose is gonna depend on whether you're doing the fusion or forte or the infinity. All right, so using the bolts from when you removed the sidearm assemblies before, the documentation is real clear that you want the lower holes on the assembly piece and the third hole up here on the frame itself. So let's see if we can get that put together in here once again, getting them spread apart. Here again, you want the bolts on the inside. The first one's always the toughest. And one, two, three. Yep, I thought you were up too high on that. Left three hand. from the bottom, right? Bottom and the third one from the bottom. Yep, you're up too high on that side there, right there. Come down one. One, two. And if you haven't noticed this yet, Melissa's usually right. <laughs> no comment. So while Paul is tightening down that sidearm, I just want you to notice that the new sidearms have gone back to the bungees. All right, so the sidearm apparatus that was just taken off of the frame, that was being used with the Velcro. So if you are the bungee lover, no bungee jumping here, just bungee for your side grips, you're gonna be happy that that has gone back to the bungee cords. Now, one thing about that, again, as he's tightening that down, I use the side grip mechanisms from my leader grip company. And what's probably gonna happen on my frame once Paul is done with it, is I'm not gonna be using all three of those bungee cords. I'm gonna see which one I think is gonna be best but I think it's gonna be the middle one and attached to my side grip from the leader grip company. All right, Paul, what do we got over here next? Parts and parts and parts. So the ratchet stop assembly and uh, basically getting all the little pieces put together. I've done it many times, but I always use the instructions. All right, after consulting with Sammy, he's told me exactly how to do this now. 
So you start out with the nut assembly, the threaded assembly, and you stick it in the outside, but you have to work it in with the latch assembly here. So that when your latch comes up, and we'll show you a little bit more, that it's in the right place. It obviously takes a little bit more coordination than I have, but eventually it gets in there. All right. Then the back side of this, which is square, goes in as well. You put the latch on. Now this little bump here keeps the latch from falling down on the bar when you don't want it. Bolt comes in, screws it in. It takes a lot more thought before you start doing it to get everything set up than it takes to put it in place. And you snug it down and then you've got your latch assembly. Tighten it up just a So it will drop down and lay on the bar or pull up. So we're just thinking through these ratchets here. There's an extra ratchet mechanism on this new apparatus because of the dual load functionality. So Paul and I are just doing this for the first time, obviously, and I'm gonna play with it a little bit. These ratchet locations probably could be moved a little bit one way or the other to correlate with what you're used to, but this is the this is the orientation that I'm used to, so we're gonna try this. And I'll work with it a little bit. If we have to make a change, we'll make a change. So we think we have the ratchets correct. <laughs> Time will tell, won't it? <laughs> so basically it's just putting that black device through this, through the top part there. Um, the ratchet is the device I mean, and then putting the sides, both left and right side through, and then you tighten it down with the bolt. Again, we're going to reiterate, you guys, you don't want to tighten that down too hard or you're not going to be able to give it that slight tug forward and then angle it downward. So it's just going to be a little bit of adjusting because you want it to move freely, but you don't want it to be stuck. All right, so Sammy has given us his best advice on something. So we have assembled and installed both of my new side arms. But the thing that, there's a couple of things that come into play actually that I use in my studio all the time. The first thing is an extra hand crank on my front backing bar. The other thing is one of the handy hammocks. Now the handy hammock comes with instructions for installation. The trouble that we found on the old sidearm configuration is that the handy hammock got in the way of attaching the extra hand crank. Now I've not loaded obviously with this new system, but what we're going to try to do is take one of the latching mechanisms off of my old sidearm off the back because I don't need that any longer. And if you'll notice over here on this side, I have it, one of the bungee cords that's attached to the handy hammock, I have it looped around the ratchet assembly. Well, there's no ratchet assembly on the left side of the frame. So we're gonna take that extra part, one of the extra parts that we no longer need, and we're gonna at attach it over here even though we don't really need the ratchet, we just need that little extension hook part of the assembly. So the ratchet is not there, but the little hook is so that I can use that with my handy hammock. And I'm gonna reverse yeah, this. I think you wanna turn it towards the inside there, honey. I'm gonna reverse it because of the way the bungee comes around. So we think this is gonna work, you guys. Again, stay tuned once I start working with this whole system. But uh, we always have the handy hammocks in stock. 
and it is a nice way to keep your batting up off of the floor. All right, so just kind of bring it under the frame there and loop it around. And I don't think that'll be in the way of anything. Okay, so that's just an MK weight little trick and hopefully that'll just solve that problem because I really like having the extra hand crank on my bars. Good idea, Sammy. All right, so we're just gonna put the bars up in, into the slots now, so stay tuned. Uh, I think Mr. MK and Samson are gonna head home and I might just stay for a little while and load up some fabric and see how this works. Hey everyone, it's MK. I'm loaded up with my first quilt and I think I like this, you guys. And not that I do a whole lot of free motion, I don't. But I can see where the free motion with the ruler work will be really nice up here at the edge. You're not gonna be hitting a bar. But one of the things that I loved about loading this way is just the clear view for loading. Um, my zippers work perfectly fine. The leader grips work perfectly fine. And so I will be doing a new loading video soon and very soon. Uh, but I think it looks amazing. This is a Quilt of Valor quilt. I'm just about ready to get going on. And uh, I'm super, super excited and happy to be home, happy to be back with the girls, happy to get some quilting done, and really happy to have my new sidearms on my gallery frame, on my Fusion. Hey everyone, it's MK. Hey, I have just been stitching through this quilt as I have had it loaded with the clear view mode. And I wanted to talk you through a couple of things. Just, you know, this was my first quilt, first time I've ever loaded up a quilt this way. And so I was really kind of experimenting and just doing things, I don't know, trying to figure out what would work best for me. So the first thing I wanted to let you know is I'm still using the bungees in a slightly different way than what they are, you know, intended to be used. So here on the gallery frame, we've got three attachment apparatuses, whatever you want to call them, for the bungees. I'm actually only using one bungee. And you're going to see that my uh, clamp is hanging off here on the side of the frame. Now I could go ahead and take that clamp off, but I might want to use it again, so I decided to leave it on. But what I did was I threaded that through the apparatus in the opposite way so that I could use the bungee at however long it needed to be and so that I could also use my side grips. All right, so Mr. MK will come in a little bit closer. Uh, my side grips, I've talked about them several times before. These are part of the leader grip system that I use here at MK Quilts. And because I'm, you know, I really have a lot to get done every day when I'm quilting, I don't really have time to do six bungees and six clamps every time I advance. So I like to use the side grip with just one of the cords. Previously I was using the uh, Velcro, but this came with the new sidearm upgrade, so I thought, well, I'm gonna go back to bungees. But the thing about that is I don't wanna have to attach or you know, clamp down the bungee every advance. So this is why I've threaded it through the other way. I'm using a very, very highly advanced tool, um, you know, a binder clip from Staples. And every time I advance, I just put my side grip on, put the end of the bungee cord through the little ribbon that comes with that, and then I'm just doing that. And that way I don't have to come back over here and snap the bungee in again. Okay, so that's the first thing that I've been experimenting with and it's actually working quite well. Okay, so the next thing that I found that was very, very helpful with the clear view mode, hold on one second. So the other thing that I found that was very, very helpful with the clear view mode is the ability to move this bar, the quilt bar, up onto the pole cradles. All right, let me just advance my spot here so that I can get my next spot for advancing. And then I'll show you what I've been doing as I have had advanced through this quilt. Okay, so I got my spot. And you, those of you who have taken my classes know that that's how I advance. I always advance using a start point. 
Okay, we'll just trim these threads. Okay, so what I have been doing to advance my quilt every single time, and hint, if you're hearing anything in the background, it's Samson wanting attention. <laughs> Samson, you have to wait your turn. It's mommy's turn right now for attention. Okay, so what I've been doing is actually taking this bar out of the mechanism and putting it up into the pole cradle. And all that takes is just a little bitty tug there. Come down onto the other side, loosen up the, the ratchets, and then again, just take that out and put it right up in the pole cradle. Now, what that allows me to do that I really, really like is it allows me to get in here and play with my batting you know, I might want to uh, straighten that out a little bit, make sure that it's not bunched up. And that's one of the things that you're not really able to do with the alternate loading mode. I mean, I guess you could, but uh, this just makes it really slick. Okay, so that's what I've been doing. So it's nicely up here in the pole cradle. Paul, why don't you walk around that way a little bit so they're not looking at my back. Just make sure that my backing ratchet is up. It is and then I'm just advancing, and you're just gonna see that that pole that's attached to the quilt top just kind of slides nicely with that. Now, for those of you who like to float, this system is gonna be really, really awesome for you because you wouldn't even really have to put this bar on here. You could just leave that bar completely off and just float your quilt over the front of your frame. So just a couple of things that I've kind of learned just by my doing my first quilt with the clear view mode. I really, really like it. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this clamp back down, do the rest of the bottom edge of this quilt, and just wanna let you know that I am gonna redo my loading video. That loading video on my YouTube channel has been my most watched video since I started my YouTube channel. But you know, it's kind of old and dated, and now we have the different configurations with the frame. So I do plan on doing a new video on that, covering all the information about the zippers and the grips, and how I'm using both of the orientations for loading. So stay tuned for that. All right, back to work. Thanks for joining me. It's MK. Bye-bye.